Well, hey guys, welcome to another live stream here at Willow Ridge Acres, another puppy live stream. Uh, coming to you at a new time tonight, 7.30. Trying this out, uh, see if it works for you guys and if it works for us. It's super hot here in South Texas, so hoping that uh, it's a, a little bit easier. And we actually bumped our like feeding time for all the animals back to 6.30. So uh, I just literally just got done with all the feeding and filling up all the water troughs. I'm a little sweaty still. Um, and it's just me and Michelle today. Our, our oldest kids are actually at summer camp right now. So we don't have a camera operator today. I just have the camera strapped to the fence out there for puppy cam. So the camera's not going to move uh, with the puppies out no, there. No Owen cam. Either. No Owen cam today. He's at, he's at uh, camp. But uh, we've got the camera out there uh, with... Uh, the seven lives, livestock guardian puppies that are still out there. And then we have one of the puppies here with us uh, in the house. And he's actually getting picked up, uh, I guess, technically tomorrow morning. But uh, it's, this is also kitten cam. Uh, we have a couple of kittens here. He's trying but, to knock the light over. Yeah. Here. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, somebody's flying in from New Hampshire late tonight. We're picking them up from the airport. They're gonna actually going to stay the night here at the house. Uh, and then uh, early in the morning, fly out with their puppy. So uh, buy a puppy, get a free night at Willow Ridge Acres. <laughs> Pending a background check. We don't want any weirdos. <laughs> so, yes, this is Mac Jr. He's going to be going to uh, New Hampshire tomorrow morning. This is uh, the first junior that has been named. Mac, our, our breeding sire, has never had a Mac junior until that one right there. So <laughs> pretty exciting. Uh, as you guys are tuning in, let us know where you're watching from uh, in the live chat. Love to give you a shout out. Let's see, we got Phil tuning in. He said, hello, Jenna and Phil in northern or north central Kentucky. Uh, thanks for watching. I know you guys are excited to pick yours up as well. Uh, and he, he's it'll be here before you know. Yeah, it'll be here before you know it. He's one of the puppies uh, that you see on the puppy cam. It's going to be difficult to tell you which one is which, and it looks like it's yeah. lagging right now. But um, they're out there, you know, living their best life outside, getting used to all the sights and sounds and smells of the farm, uh, getting some exposure with the chickens and the and the goats and our pig as well. And you can't see too too well, but we have like a pool out there for them too, and they just. Especially like after they eat, they like run around, chase each other, jump in the pool. It's just pretty much like, sorry, sorry. It's, we have a lot of animals in this room right now. Um, yeah. And like a quarter in the dryer. I don't know if that's super loud on the video. It might be. Well, then I'll go fix that too. Yeah, just go pause it for now. Yeah. <laughs> we have some clothes in the dryer and it seems like somebody left some change in their pockets. So that's all tumbling around right now. Um, yeah, let's see. Evie said, Evie Rose said, hi, tuning in from Iowa. Thanks for watching, Evie. Let us know if you guys have any questions. Drop them in the live chat. Phil said that the time worked great this new time, 7.30 Central. Let's we'll see if it works for everybody. The Real Terry tuning in. Hello from West Michigan. Hey, Terry. Sorry we, we missed you guys last week. We just weren't able to uh, do the live stream last week. It just didn't work out. Uh, but we missed you guys. It's been a while. Brooke tuning in from Southeast Texas. You're, you're probably not too far from us then. We're in like, like South Central Texas here, uh, just North of San Antonio. I'm sure it's hot. Yeah, I'm sure it's hot there, Brooke, <laughs> right? Dallas, you can relate. like Dallas this morning and it was like 104 there. It was hotter in Dallas than it is here. It's just everywhere. Yeah, she literally just drove in from Dallas, dropping our uh, four oldest kids. We have five kids. So the four oldest ones uh, went to summer camp. So she literally just got in like an I hour like ago. We can't cancel two weeks in a row. So if you, I, I said, if I'm not back, just start with help me and I'll just like reach into the drive. How long did you drive today? Like four hours, four and a half five, hours? Yeah. yeah, five hours. Yeah. But she just got in from a five hour drive. So on the farm with EIEIO tuning in. Thanks for watching. Uh, the real Terry said, and thanks for the lovely card and sticker. Of, of course. Of course. Thank you for subscribing to the newsletter and. Do we have we ever actually sent? Do we send a newsletter? Uh, right now we're it's it's really just like uh, notifications about our live stream. But as we start posting more like blog posts, and then when we start posting more YouTube videos, and um, 
you know, maybe some uh, like good product alerts, like when uh, products that we use, you know, that we love and use um, when they go on sale, when we notice they go on sale on Amazon, we might kind of send out some uh, newsletters about that. If you guys, you know, the heads up on some good deals. Brooke says she's in Houston. Oh my gosh. It's always humid in Houston. Trying to be positive. I know. Like, I don't have a lot of positive things to say about I'm, Houston. Brooke, I'm sure you love it in Houston. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Brooke said it was 106 today. Oh, oh my good. gosh. And I'm sure humid. <laughs> That's got to be brutal. <laughs> uh, Trey Saylor said, uh, Windy City, Chicago, worst city in the world. Smoke, haze, air, due to wildfires. I've been seeing that on the news. Yeah. yeah. One of our son's nurses just went to Canada and was there for that situation. And she said it was pretty intense. Yeah. Yeah. Trace uh, said, mm. enjoy your staycation, Jeff and Michelle. We still have Jackson, our youngest, with us. But yeah, it's going to be a little quiet here uh, this week. But I'll tell you, though, um, I mean, it's, it's quiet, but it's a lot of work without the kids here. Um, like I did pretty much. Michelle came home from from that trip to and from DFW from Dallas, uh, and she came right as I was starting feeding time, and you know emptying all the water troughs, filling them up with fresh water, and that's you know, been I, a chore in itself. We're doing it really that is. two to three times a day right now. That's yeah, it really lot. is. Um, but I was determined to do it myself because I know she just drove. You know, she just got uh, in from a five hour drive, but she still came and like helped feed the inside dogs, but. Um, it's a lot of work without the help of the you know the rest of the family. This is kind of like a a, a whole family effort to run the small farm here, and uh, it's good. It's good for the kids to get away and to have a break yes. from it. Um, but man, it puts a lot more work on on us <laughs> when they're gone. Yeah, so I, I think I'm sure like a, an average family doesn't have a small farm when their kids are gone. Mm. It's like oh my gosh, this is like wow. relaxed time. Yeah. No, it's actually extra work time for us. So it's kind of the opposite. Yeah. We'll make the best of it. Yeah. Yep. We we do staycations at like a local resort here for just like a night or two. Yeah. Me and her. There's like a a place and they have like a section for kids and some <laughs> friends of our, you know, have said, Oh, we could take all the kids and for the first night and then send them home and this and that. And it's like, no, 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 no. That's like our genuine place. The children here, will Mac. never, Come here. ever, ever, ever go there. Uh oh, I think we lost oh, the no. camera out, outside. You want to go fix it? Yeah, I'll go fix it. Hey, let us know if you guys have any questions. I'm going to go fix that outside camera. Uh, post any questions you might have in the live chat and uh, yeah, pick, gonna... pick Mac up and All show right. them. Oh, buddy. Yes. So this is Max Jr. He's one of May's puppies, obviously. He's got the badger markings. And then he doesn't have any, what are you doing? Any anywhere else? Uh, no, that's just mud. He doesn't have any anywhere else, just on his face. And he is weighing right at like just under 17 pounds. And he is 10 weeks tomorrow. And he doesn't want to participate anymore. Our other dogs are inside. So he's playing with them right now. We're just trying to keep everybody happy and, yeah, cool because it's so hot outside. But I think this upcoming weekend we have another puppy that's going home. And then within the next, like, three weeks... I think kind of the 20th ish of June, um, everybody will be gone, which is kind of bittersweet, but we have some projects that we really, really need to do around the farm. Um, of course, the fencing project that we keep talking about, which definitely escalated this week because we came home last Friday night to a note on our gate and at that time, our goats were still on the other side, and our neighbor had um, found one of I'm our back. goats. Uh, she had, she dug out, or she squeezed out of like a rock area and was like eating grass, like all out in the street area. So that fence project, like, has like 
escalated <laughs> in the priority list. <laughs> but, yes. you know, it's actually supposed to be, I think, 10 degrees cooler next week. It'll still be like 96, but like that's going to be better than yes. 106. It's, you know, it's hot when uh, you feel like a cool front uh, blew in when it's only 96. Yes. Only 96 degrees. Uh, he didn't want to be on camera for no? very long. They're oh. all playing. I don't know if you can. Like, yeah, probably. But like, we get asked this question like quite a bit. Like, how do they do with our own animals? And we actually have a cat right here that you can see. And then under the table, you can see some of the little kittens running around there, barely. But they are all just playing together. And he does really well. I mean, they all always do really well. So they do great with other animals and cats. Like we get asked that so much. Yes. Let's see. We've got a couple of comments and questions here. The real Terry said, Michelle, I remember the first time I dropped my daughter off at camp, cried the entire 40 miles mm. back home. The second time I cried a bit, third year sniffles, maybe. <laughs> it was fine for all the kids except Owen. Owen is 10 and he's been, he's had a camp countdown for about two months. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> He's been super excited, but the reality has hit this week for him and he's kind of gone back and forth. And so they changed it this year to where I couldn't like fully walk him into his like group table. So he was a little bit emotional and I had to like do the big girl like gulp where I'm like, I'm going to be. Yeah in control here he, because if be i fine. cry he's gonna cry but yeah. he's gonna have the best time so yeah. it was this is like good for him. a drop and release situation yep but yeah as i was walking in the car i was like i feel so stupid and i'm so upset but <laughs> i feel better now <laughs> yes uh tracy <laughs> taylor said is tomorrow's pup fly out going with humans in coach yes so uh max uh owner um like, you know, one of them is flying here tomorrow or tonight, actually. I guess it might technically I mean, be tomorrow. I think it's like 11.58. Yeah, so. the, the plane lands at 11.58. It's literally the last flight in, I think. And uh, I'm going to pick them up. And, uh, yeah, it's a late flight and then, like, an early flight out. So she's literally just going to to pick up the pup and then fly right back out. But, um yeah, we won't fly our our puppies in uh, in cargo, so that's a like a, a no go for us. Um, it's got to fly, you know, in coach uh, with the passenger, with the you know new owner, and um, you know, there's some pretty strict guidelines on that. Um, it's got to be able to fit into a like a, a pet carrier that fits underneath the seat in front of you. And as you know, Great Pyrenees puppies get big quick, so I think the airline that she's flying on um the limit the weight limit is uh 20 pounds and he weighs like 17 pounds right now so it's cutting it close um so he was gonna stay with us a little bit longer but um you know yeah. we're flexible we want to do what's best for the you know puppy and the family so we make it work yep yeah the uh, the only other options would be uh she was thinking about either or she was also thinking about flying in and then renting a car and driving all the way back to new hampshire but it's like a 30 hour drive so that wouldn't be fun uh, or um there's also like courier services where uh you pay someone almost like a a long distance pet uber mm -hmm. <laughs> but that can get pretty pricey mm -hmm. so i saw one on tiktok and she was um taking a great pyrenees somewhere and it she ended up discovering this is just gonna change the subject just a little bit. That it was like covered in ticks. Oh gosh. And like some I'm not exaggerating, were just blown up oh, like huge. Gross. So they had been there for a while. Thank you for not sharing that one with me. And she found <laughs> a few of them and then she pulled over on the side of the road and like found other ones. And then she found like a dog washing place and the dog washing place like helped her to like get all of them off. Oh, that's good. So anyway, yeah. I thought that was crazy. Hey, so I know the puppy cam doesn't look like it has much action on it, but if you look in the very kind of background, uh, that's where they're playing right now. They're all kind of like playing underneath one of the trees way back in the back, back there. So at some point they might come closer to uh, the camera. Yeah. So I promise you there are puppies on the puppy cam. They're just off in the distance. 
they're <laughs> learning to be independent. That's well, right. I guess we could say like they're actually like sleeping outside on their own. Now. Yep. Yeah. So on this <laughs> on this camera, you can kind of see on the left, uh, like our ten by ten kennel, and that's like kind of the first step. Uh, once they're around like eight weeks, or I don't know about seven weeks, once we know that um, they're going to be livestock guardians. That's the first spot that they go to start getting used to being outside is in that 10 by 10 kennel that we have a like a, a big dog house, like a custom built dog house attached to you. Um, and they stay in there unless we're down there with them. And uh, then we'll let them out for a little bit of, you know, time to run around. But there's space in the 10 by 10 for them to run around as well when they're that size. Uh, but then they're kind of in this next stage right now where um, they're out in this cross fenced area, a lot more space and they're out even at night. So they can lay down anywhere in that area that you see and sleep underneath the stars and get used to doing they do that. They have May and Millie with them. Yes, they have um, you know, the two yeah. mama dogs. Yep, and then, um, <clears throat> and then, you know, kind of the final stage, uh, the last week or two that we have them here as livestock guardian dogs in training, uh, you know, we'll let uh, some of the livestock over with them like unattended, mm -hmm. like to where they start learning. Uh, but they're still getting exposure to that um, in supervised times right now. Yep. Let's see. Grandma Doors tuning in said a very happy monkey is here. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Um, on the farm with EIEIO said, you are so lucky. Our parents won't let us oh. have any indoor pets. It's kind of a zoo here, honestly. Oh. We have two kittens. A uh, full-grown cat, some indoor dogs. It's crazy. The kittens are uh, literally like wrestling on the couch in front of us. Not to see that. <laughs> Trying to play with the um, the lighting cables. On my way home today, there was somebody, somebody <laughs> that just had a sign that said like puppies for sale. Oh my gosh. Kittens are like super wrestling right now. It took every, I thought you'd be really, 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 really mad. Like next level mad. I just wanted to rescue them and then like rehome them like ourselves. Yeah, that's not the type of breeder we are to just like sell puppies on the side of the road. Yeah, I wanted to just be like, all right, how much are they? I'll buy all of them and then get, take them to the vet and then find homes for them. But I was like, I need to make it home. Do not look at the sign. <laughs> Keep driving. <laughs> yep. Hey, if you guys have any questions, uh, let us know in the live chat. We'd love to answer any questions you have. We're probably uh, we're going to try our best to keep this to an hour tonight because uh, we do need to prep for um, Max, <laughs> and uh, own, new un owner coming in. Unpack the car. <laughs> yeah, and unpack the car from Michelle's trip to and from Dallas. We so. hid our mess that was like on the table right before. The <laughs> yes. I guess it doesn't matter if I tell them, right? Uh, <laughs> Let's see. The real Terry said, "Any rec any recommendations on harness strap extenders mm. for uh, for the belly straps? I'm looking for extenders that can fit metal That's buckles." Hmm. I have never looked into that. We don't use harnesses. Melissa Grace uses a harness for Meredith. Yeah. Otherwise, we don't. Yeah, yeah. We don't really take ours on on walks. I guess um, Melissa will take Meredith on a walk around our neighborhood sometimes. Um, but like Mac hasn't really left the the farm other than if he needs to go to the vet. Yes. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Terry, I would say, you know, I, I don't want to like lead you the wrong way. I don't, I don't want to lie to you. So, no, I, I don't have any really good recommendations for um, harness strap extenders because we, we just haven't used them. This the comment show up after? Yes? No? Uh, yeah. So maybe somebody else watching at another time may have better experience and be able yeah. to answer that. Maybe somebody watching right now can chime in in the in the comments. Sorry, there's there's so much going on. There is. I'm just trying to make sure that the puppy isn't trying to use the restroom or anything. Uh, we took him out yeah. before we started. We have both before. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't have carpet here, so. Yes. It's not a big deal if he has an accident. We can clean it up easy. Yes. <laughs> Let's see if we can see any any puppy action going on. I hear them. Uh, one of the oh, puppies is getting, getting into the, in the water trough. 
That's, yep. Um, who's Esther's family? Yeah, Esther, uh, one of the puppies. Uh, let's see if, if they're tuning in. Esther is going to Mich to Michelle in Brenham, Texas. Um, Michelle, if you're tuning into this, Esther absolutely loves getting in the water. Like, in fact, while like after I dump the trough out and I'm filling it up and have the hose in there, she'll, she can't resist but like get into the trough and she loves to like bite the water stream as mm -hmm. it's coming out of the out of the hose every so single time every time yeah as soon as that hose comes over she like follows it and goes after it yes they're definitely playing like further um, yeah it's been interesting to watch may especially this week it's a little bit awkward she's like kind of still letting the puppies like nurse like they're not yeah. getting any out and they're like humongous and it's just like super awkward and then the next minute she's like playing them and rolling around and stuff and i'm just like what I, what am i watching like i don't know <laughs> what i'm watching right now yeah she gets like super playful with her puppies they're all definitely finding their voices i'm sure you can hear them but yes um when the other dogs are barking at something they're barking now and they're kind of coming out and seeing like what's going on they're not as like just oblivious to kind of what's going on so yeah <laughs> they saw that puppy run i'm sure yes. you can see that <laughs> where they kind of like teeter totter yeah <laughs> Well, if you're just uh, tuning in, let us know where you're watching from. Love to give you a shout out. Or if you have any questions about Great Pyrenees uh, puppies or uh, small farm living uh, or goats, raising goats, um, any type of questions like that, let us know. Drop them in the, in the live chat. Love to answer any questions you might have. So we fully have our goats on the house side of the property due to our fencing issue for their safety. So yeah. And letting them graze over here. And they're going to be over here anyway, so we just went ahead and moved them. So we had to chicken wire the front porch, like to so keep them off of the front porch from eating all porch. of our porch plants, because they would do it. They pretty much just eat anything and everything they can get into. Yeah, they're literally right outside the front windows right now, uh, right in the front yard, grazing. Let's see, on the farm uh, with EIEIO said, uh, Pyrenees are very stubborn and we have never trained ours any on any commands. Mm -hmm. Ours just stay in the field and do their job and be family pets. Uh, do you have any experience with mm -hmm. training them? Is it hard? Melissa well, Grace, if she was here, she's trained Meredith. I, yeah, our I don't daughter. know the whole list. Um, they are trainable. It's just... <laughs> Are you willing to wait out their stubbornness because they don't respond well to correction so it's more just a matter of like battle of wills like are you willing to like be patient enough and wait it out <laughs> right right but they're just never gonna be like we have a blue healer and she's extremely obedient she lives to do what we tell her to do to work that sort of thing um yeah there's certain dogs that are just like uh eager to please and like our blue healer is that way our we have a blue healer golden retriever mix and she's that way as well uh great pyrenees they're very loyal and they're very loving but they're not like eager to please they don't, they're not like trying to impress you they're they just kind of do their own thing um so they can be a little difficult and stubborn to, to train on commands for sure it can be done it's just uh i would say the uh challenge level of it is probably on the very high right. side of you know compared to other breeds the difficulty level uh the real cherry said eros is napping so that he can make a, a good go Ooh. at the midnight deer yeah uh <laughs> yeah in the yeah. yard bark fest yes of course you gotta yeah. rest up for that yeah yes <laughs> that's prime time right there for great pyrenees we got a question here. Any suggestions for a nine to 10 month old peer to become livestock guardian dog? Uh, we have five chickens <laughs> in an inside yard, separate, our separate space. We're in uh, Alabama. 
Um, I would say a few things. Um, definitely only supervised um, at time first. with the chickens at yeah. first. And then during that time is when you correct any what we call stalking behavior, which is like the chickens should be able to be in the yard and the Great Pyrenees has no, they don't look at them, not that they avoid them, but like they're not drawn to them like at all. Right. And we correct that behavior by, well, the first thing we do is like the neck jab. And then if that doesn't work, we grab them To try to like redirect them to, to, you know, distract them from being like kind of tunnel visioning on, Yeah. yeah. Snap them out of that. So if that doesn't work, we do the scruff and then just like have them down till they're calm, tell them no. Um, yeah. But just consistent correction and then supervised time only for, uh, you know, I don't know the temperament of the dog or what this dog has been exposed to or not, but, um, you know, I wouldn't trust a dog that you didn't raise around chickens as a puppy and until they're 12, 18 months on their own. Right. Right. There we go. Puppy cam is back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I would also say that, you know, I, I believe uh, livestock guardian skills are like very deeply ingrained in this breed mm -hmm. and that I believe, you know, just about any of them can be a livestock guardian. I think some are a little bit more uh, in tune with those instincts and, than others um and like easier to adapt to it um but i believe any of them can do very well at it so um it just takes some patience and some training um you know to to give them very uh focused uh exposure you know and, and supervised exposure to especially around chickens mm -hmm. so the the chickens are really the the challenge um our our dogs have really never had an uh, an issue or a challenge being around goats or kind of other larger livestock, but it seems like chickens can be fun to chase. So, um, yeah, I would just say, make sure that, uh, you give them some supervised or give that nine to 10 month old Pyrenees, uh, some supervised exposure to the chickens and, uh, redirect and discourage any like stalking behavior for, I would say like, at least a month until you, you're confident that, you know, your dog is, is not uh, reacting to the chickens being around it. Uh, let's see. Somebody said, hello from San Antonio. I just adopted a three-year-old Great Pyrenees mm -hmm. a few days ago, and they are indeed smart but stubborn at mm -hmm. times. Yeah. We're not too far from you. We're uh, just north of San Antonio in Bulverde. So that's awesome. Thanks for uh, adopting uh, a great Pyrenees. It sounds like you found like a, a good rescue. Yes. So, that's awesome. Bill said they're trainable. They're just stubborn. They'll do whatever you ask them to do as long as they want to do it. Right. That's correct. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So when you ask them to like, if you call their name mm -hmm. and ask them to come to you, they'll come to you if they wanted to come to mm -hmm. you. But if they don't, if they don't want to, if they're distracted by something else, they're just going to kind of keep doing their thing. <laughs> Uh, Tracy said one of your mamas was a great guardian also. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all of our puppies come from, um, you know, all of our, all of our, uh, adult great Pyrenees are working dogs on our, on our farm. And when we got them as puppies, we were very, um, you know, specific in getting them from breeders of, of, you know, working pedigree. So they came from, you know, working dog, you know, working great Pyrenees on, you know, working farms. So. They kind of have that uh, ingrained in them. Now they can still make great family pets as well, though. Especially when we raise them as puppies, because if we know they're companions, we like spoil. Them. Yeah, yeah, we do. We do. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Zane Downs asked, uh, any advice on picking a male? No, sorry. Uh, the puppies are playing. playing. So I would they say get both. Out. Yeah, any advice on picking a male yeah, or female? We, we have both at the same time. Yeah. Why not both? <laughs> I think that just comes down to like a size. I mean, but I mean, I don't know. They're all big. They're all big. It's but like, the males can tend to be bigger, um, for sure. 
Um, and then if you don't want, like if it's going to be inside, the there's a potential a boy could learn to lift his leg and pee on your stuff where a girl squats down. But if it's for outside, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if they're if yeah, if it's going to be a guardian, I mean, all of ours I wouldn't really say that they're you know a male is better than a female at guardian or a female is better than a male. They certainly while the girls are in heat, Mac is not doing a whole lot of guarding anything. No, he's, he's very, very distracted. distracted. <laughs> and the girls are just like always working. I mean, yes. even when they have puppies, we have to kind of they do settle into the routine of having the puppies, but that first couple days when they hear everyone outside barking, they're very like alert to on what's alert. going yep. on. Yep. So I don't know if that helped or not. Yeah. On, on the farm with EIEIO said, uh, I think females are more loyal to their jobs and boys take longer to mature sure. depending on personality. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a, I would say that's a fair assessment mm -hmm. for sure. Yep. May is our youngest. And I would say she has more puppy behaviors. Yeah, she saw some puppy behaviors. But she is not a puppy, but she was also the youngest, and we already had a ton of workers. So she just kind of came into it like, hey, we're going to yeah. hang out. You know? Oh, no, we lost it again. <gasps> All right, you want to keep answering questions? Okay. <laughs> okay. So the real Terry said, I adopted Eros at nine months. He'll be three this November. It's been a big learning curve for me and well worth it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I We got all of ours when they were puppies, so it's hard to say, you know, what it would be like getting one at nine months. But I think once you research, as long as you research the breed and you're comfortable with the personality and traits of the breed you know whether your dog's going to be inside or outside you can overcome pretty much anything it's just a matter of like having patience i guess um, they're like really going at it here hold up so this is rosie our blue healer <laughs> she's teaching them a thing or two about playing rosie lives to play she she just will not stop and it's good for him to learn that he's not the alpha right now in the house so as long as they keep it under control we'll just let them go at it <laughs> okay so this person says i don't have a farm like you guys do but i take boo oh my great pyrenees to the dog park and she does the perimeter walk checking out what she needs to guard. It's the closest I can do to replicate a farm. I definitely have seen that behavior. Um, even, uh, I'm trying to think of who it was. One of Millie's puppies came back a year later because they were getting another puppy. And when Millie's puppy came back, she literally trace like our entire perimeter just to scope everything out and then she settled in and like acted you know like she knew where where she was from so that kind of scoping out the situation behavior is totally normal and I don't know for me it makes me feel comfortable just knowing that like nothing is going to sneak into our yard or you know up to the house or anything without our dogs knowing about it. All right, let's see. The real Terry. Under the stubborn heading, I paid a $90 after hours fee to have someone from the kennel get arrows in the car so that I could get him to the kennel for his recent stay. <laughs> oh. Did you get it working? Yeah. Uh oh. Huh. All right, we're back. <laughs> he was really going on it with uh, Rosie. <laughs> He's like, I'm not so sure about this. He's going to sleep really good. Oh, yeah. We're going to let him stay up and play like as late as he wants. So fingers crossed he sleeps on the plane. 
tomorrow. Yeah. All right, you answered this one? Yes. Well, I read it. It's not really an answer. Gotcha. Ooh. But I didn't. This one. What are May's puppy behaviors? Um, definitely the, what do you call that? When like they pouncing, the pouncing, um, like she taunts the other dogs to like try to get them to play with her. And she's doing that with the puppies and then yeah. they'll be like nibbling on her tail or something. And she'll turn and just start into this rolling like play, which like our other older dogs do not do that. What's up, dude? What's he's up? tired now. Are you sleeping? Here, I'll take him potty. You can finish. Okay. <laughs> Answering questions. I'll be right back. We're going to go on a potty break. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, let's know if you guys have any other questions. Hopefully the uh, puppy cam keeps working. They're all kind of playing in the mud out there right now. So they they end up being kind of dirty puppies, but we clean them. And, uh, but that's their way of staying cool in this Texas heat is to get in the water, kind of play in the dirt and the mud. They're getting used to being outside livestock guardians. <clears throat> RA said, uh, my stress just melted with that puppy. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's like super, super fluffy right now. Michelle just took him out to um, to go to the bathroom. So he'll be back in in just a minute here. <laughs> Let us know if you guys have any questions. Drop them in the live chat. You can see the puppies out there just kind of rolling around in the mud. So Michelle, I just saw her out the front window and she's chasing Mac Jr. Cause he's trying to run down to, uh, you know, the animal area where all the other puppies are because he wants to be back in there with them. But uh, we've got them all cleaned up and ready to meet his new owner late tonight when she flies in. So we're keeping him in the house until then. Keep him nice and clean. Here he is. He's back. He completed his mission. Good job. Good job, buddy. And refilled the tank. Oh, good job. <laughs> Deborah's tuning in. She said, Pyrenees are the best. Looking forward to seeing how Ruger accepts our soon-to-be great-grandson. I'm sure he'll do great. They, they just, like, instinctually are super gentle with, like, small, you know, animals and, and small children and babies. They just, they uh, they, they know their, their task and they do it very well, just guarding things that are vulnerable pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On the farm with EIEIO said or asked at what age do you think it is best for them to go to their new homes? Um, I think that depends on what their job is going to be. Um, if they're going to be companions about eight to 10 weeks is best because you really like they learn, we learn as soon as we learn their name, we call them their name. Um, and so I feel like they're <clears throat> really starting to like discover their like personality and identity and just kind of, I don't know, like as a pet owner, I think that bond, you know, is best created with the forever family. As far as our guardians, we don't like to send them home before 12 weeks unless the family has other guardians or experience with, um, training livestock guardians because you know we just want to make sure that there's nothing um you know we want to set them up for success right no behaviors that need to be corrected or watched or like when we do a handoff with a family we tell them everything we possibly know at this at the time like this is what we do for correction this is what like 
you know, with him, he gets these uchis and like really like bucks and fights. And so we're going to tell his family like how we've been handling that. And anyway, so I would say that long answer is between eight to 12 weeks, depending on yeah. what their job is. But we sent some home at 16 weeks, right? Uh, yeah. Last year we kept one until 16 weeks. But they were wanting they, chicken train. Like they wanted, they wanted us to keep super, her longer. And that was fine. Yep. Look at how like huge his paws are already. <laughs> They're like bear paws. They are. <laughs> we are did you not impressed? We are did not send uh, Bane home on Saturday. Yeah, he's a big boy. Bane was, was huge. A huge, huge boy. And he just Man, truly. I want to see you. Look at the freckle belly. Look at that <laughs> freckle belly. <laughs> Our Rosie's trying to get back in. She always looks like a little raccoon. Yes. With her little paws. Like yes. Staring. Let's see. We got some more questions here. Real Terry asks, what are your thoughts on breeding a Great Pyrenees mix with a full blood of Great Pyrenees? I mean, I would float your boat, like I yeah. guess, but... Yeah, I mean, in our breeding program, you know, we don't want to do that. We know, we want to keep, you know, the bloodline pure with, you know, purebred Great Pyrenees. But uh, you know, there are some people that will uh, mix in, you know, some other livestock guardians. Uh, like down here, a pretty popular mix is with a uh, Anatolian Shepherd. And it seems like the reason for that is Great Pyrenees are very, like, chill and laid back and... Um, aren't really trying to attack in order to guard. <laughs> we like that. That's kind of, that's a, um, you know, a, a character trait that we like. Uh, but some people want a guard, uh, you know, a guardian dog that's a little more aggressive. And apparently uh, Anatolians uh, kind of have a little bit more aggressiveness to them. So they'll mix that in to hopefully get like a kind of somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but we... Oh, you want to go play? You want to go play with the other pups? <laughs> there you go. Let's see. Uh, I got a question here. What's the temperature high? Hey, shh, stop. Stop. <laughs> Our blue healer wants to play right now. It's all loud. Uh, what's the temperature high your dogs can handle? Uh, so, I mean, it gets up to like 105, 106 here. And... Uh, I've got a whole video on our YouTube channel about, you know, how our dogs handle the heat and what we do to help them handle that. But kind of the short answer is, uh, you know, we provide them ample shade. So there's, you know, uh, shade trees in the area that, that they are in, um, ample clean water. So when it's this hot, we are changing the water out once, twice, sometimes three times a day in the trough because uh, they like to get in it and it'll get the water dirty. And that's the same water that they're drinking. So, you know, we change that out and keep it nice and cool for them. And then um, we also keep them brushed out. That way uh, their their coat can breathe. And so you, you don't want to trim their coat, though. You don't want to, like, shave their coat because their coat actually protects them from the sun, their mm -hmm. top coat. But you want to brush out that undercoat. And that thick undercoat is what makes them hot. So you just want to brush that out in the summer. Um, but, yeah, with that... You know, I, I'm sure, you know, that this breed, um, they are very, very well adapted to be in cold weather. Uh, but they can also do well in hot weather as well, as long as you provide them, you know, clean water, lots of clean water they can get into and cool off, shade and keep them brushed out. And, um, you know, a, a, a big reason why they're able to handle the heat is because they're not really active, that active during the day. Um they're much more active at night when it's when it's cool out anyway. And uh, during the day, they spend a lot of time just laying down in the shade and, and resting and taking a nap. So, you know, if they hear something that sounds like a threat, they'll jump up and alert to it and bark. But other than that, they're not they're not like trying to play and be all active and stuff when it's really hot outside. They just kind of find shade and lay down in it and just kind of chill out. So. We had fans at one point in each of the dog houses. And yeah, the when we were like, actually put like a fan out for Monty, who's on this side, and he lay by it literally for a couple of minutes, and then they don't like it. Like, no. Yeah, they just want to be out 
where, where the animals are that they're guarding and, but just in the shade, they'll find like the nearest shade by wherever the goats are and stuff and, and the chickens. And that way they can keep an eye on them and, you know, keep guard over them, but you know, just be kind of in the shade. It's almost like, like when your kids are out playing as a parent and you're like, I want to, I want to make sure that they're safe, but I'm going to find a shade tree to right, stand under exactly. to watch them. <laughs> I'm not trying to be out in that sun right now. So I guess in this area, we've probably gotten up to like 110 is probably the max. Like for sure, last week it was 107. Yeah. Um, so we can't speak for anything higher than that. But we do spend a lot of time on those hot days making sure that they have plenty of water. That's right. Yep. So we got a question here. What are common health issues that you have seen with your older Great Pyrenees? We honestly haven't experience any health issues with oh, our Monty. great parents. Yeah, Monty, but he he kind of had those issues right when we rescued he's him. He's a rescue, but yeah, yeah. he's and he's we not don't breed him. But yeah, he's not in our like breeding program. He's he's a rescue. He's our kind of our, our porch guardian as we call it. Um but yeah, when we when we rescued him, he had really really bad heartworms. He had to go through extensive heartworm treatment. Kind of has like a hitch in his step. We're not sure if he had some type of injury or like a hip dysplasia. Yeah, we're, we're not sure, but he's older and we're just letting him live out his best life here on the farm. Um, but yeah, we, we just um, we haven't you know, seen any health issues with our you know older Great Pyrenees. Uh, I mean, I guess maybe the only thing close to that would be uh, like uh, complications with uh, labor in, in birthing. Uh, so Mabel, one of our, you know, breeding females, um, the, the last year when she was, you know, having, uh, when she had a litter last year, it was pretty rough on her. She had mastitis and before she even had them. <laughs> yeah. Before she even, uh, gave birth to the puppies yeah. and, uh, yeah, we had to, we had to take her to, um, emergency vet. And, um, so because of that, we decided to, to get her spayed because we didn't want to risk, um, you know, losing her it, just to have, have her have another litter, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, but that's not really like a, like a genetic health issue. It just, mm -hmm. you know, it was more of a personal decision Yeah, and it could have just been bad luck, you know, this series of, you know, the infection just didn't reach the really low level antibiotics and she needed higher but for us like we love our dogs and so we didn't want to risk like losing her the cat the is kitten is literally climbing up door. our front door right now oh, her brother okay oh, yeah. uh you probably couldn't see it. it's too late oh my gosh we have two like little kittens that are like straight up having a war with each other right now where did they come from <laughs> forrest what's up man Thanks for tuning in. Forrest said, uh, what's up, everyone? Did you get all your animal chores done there? Is it, yeah. is it hot in Alabama? Oh, sure. <laughs> he said, uh, the vet is coming out tomorrow evening to give the girls a checkup. That's awesome. Yes. I'm glad you got a vet that uh, comes out to the yes. farm as well. Ours does that here for us. We love, love our vet. Our blue healer, we've talked about this with her before, right? That she's a vegan. A vegan. Yeah, and we have a vegan blue healer. She she has she allergies to eating any meat. Regular, so yeah, regular dog food. We she, try it a lot. Trust she's me. She's on vegan dog food. It's the weirdest thing. It looks like, it looks like corn pops. That are white, like white cheddar pops. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's like dog food that's white like cheddar cheese balls. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It looks like white cheddar cheese balls. Her dog food does. It doesn't look like normal dog food. It's kind she of the, it it's the strangest thing. So, well, she's also allergic to herself. Yes. So <laughs> Come here, Rosie. Come here. Yeah, we're talking about so you. So she does this Come like here. itching thing and she needs like side attack or something. It's like a shot. Yeah, our Great Pyrenees do not have issues like that. Our Blue I, Healer does. <laughs> I happen to stop by the This is Rosie. Oh, hi. The other day Say I hi. told her, Rosie needs to come back in. She's scratching herself and hey. this and that. She's Say like, you just, people. I'll, get, I'll people. get you the shot and you take it home and <laughs> give it to her yourself. I'm like, I love people like that who are like, just want to get stuff done. Yeah. Like come to the farm, do the vet visits. It's 
honestly, with this breed, it's a little intimidating when you take them to the vet. Not that you're necessarily worried about your dog. It's that people, other, other, people act. other people act like you're bringing a dinosaur into the vet. And yes. they're like, oh, hide your kids. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Other people <laughs> like act so strange around the dogs because they're, they're just so big. Yeah. Let's see. We've got another question. Uh, just ask spaying issues. We haven't had any, but no. we also, I just talked to somebody about this. Like I'm pretty firm on our practice with that. Like our vet spays or neuters or whatever are animals. Um, you can go to a low cost vet. Um, if you do some research on how they do that process, you may not be agreeable with it. Um, so we haven't had any issues with that. It went extremely smoothly spaying Mabel. Um, she recovered beautifully. Um, so yeah, no issues with that. We, however, have not neutered um, any of our, or either of our males. So I can't speak to what that process would be. It's one of the kittens. It's like trying to murder the other one. Yes. <laughs> His name is Halpert. Yes. We're big office fans. So it's Beasley and Halpert. And then this right here is Stanley. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he's just chilling. He's on the, the original with us. house cat. He's not thrilled everyone else is no. here right now. No. All right, got another question. Do you guys uh do you, do you get your dogs groomed? We do it ourselves. Yep, yeah, we do it ourselves. And by groom, we it's brushing and uh bathing them and using our coat blower. And we'll like if they need their Oh yes, their their nails and their well, their nails trimmed and... or like the fur trimmed up or like if our yes. girls are about to have a litter, we do like a birth trim on their little butt hair. Yeah, is that what it's called? Yes, like their, their skirt. skirt. Yeah. yeah, we call it their skirt. <laughs> uh, but we do it ourselves. Highly recommend that. Yeah, so if you have a coat blower, it's not that complicated. Yeah, unless you're trying to do a like AKC show style groom, we right. don't do that. Right. We go for the natural. Yep. Beauty. Here's a great question. Uh, David is tuning in said, ours keeps chasing yes. chickens and picks mm -hmm. them up and carries them around, but doesn't seem to hurt them. Is that normal? Can you tell me how old your dog is? Right. The kitten is climbing up our door again. What is going on? Yeah. Uh, David, uh, how old is this uh, Great Pyrenees? Because that would help us answer this question. I would say that it's normal behavior for kind of an adolescent Great Pyrenees. And that is kind of like, to me, that's around uh, like eight to 10 months old. Um, they kind of go through this like ornery teenage stage where they'll start chasing the chickens at times. Um, now, I would say that that stage is normal for them to go through, but I still would not encourage, like I, I would discourage that. Um, that is not... That's normal behavior for a, an ornery teenage Great Pyrenees, but that's not optimal behavior, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. So the optimal behavior is that they literally ignore the chickens. Um, they're, not, they're not making eye contact and like tracking where they're going and stalking them and chasing them. Like that's not optimal behavior. So um, the best course would be to, you know, distract and discourage that and you know correct that behavior and um you know the goal would be that that uh the great pyrenees stops paying mm -hmm. attention to the to the chickens it's mm -hmm. you know the it's kind of a weird dynamic it's like you want them to pretty much ignore the chickens but guard them with their life mm -hmm. and that's what our adult our adult great pyrenees do the only time that they acknowledge the chickens is uh during feeding time we bring bowls of you know dry dog food out to the dogs and you know, the, our chickens free range out in the animal area and they're still out because it's like it's not nighttime yet. You know, they go up at at dusk. The If you if you have chickens, you know, they just kind of auto return to the to the um, coop at night. Well, the chickens are still out and the chickens love to try to uh, mooch off the dog food. Mm -hmm. And our adult Great Pyrenees will kind of like put the mm -hmm. chickens in check. Like they're not going to chase them and try to bite them, but they will just kind of like like growl and like bark just to like almost like hey chew off like get away get away and um that's the one behavior that we don't correct we want them to do that because the dogs are the alphas 
Um, we want them to be the alphas. I don't want my dog to be so passive that when a chicken comes up to eat their food, they just like walk away and let the chicken eat all the dog food. Cause if you know anything about dog food, it's uh, vastly more expensive than chicken feed. Yes. So I don't and want my, it has chicken in it, which is just gross. Yeah. I don't want my, my chickens eating the expensive dog food. I buy, you know, layer pellets for, mm -hmm. for the chickens. They need to eat that instead. So yeah, if you're able to keep your dog away from your chickens while you kind of retrain them, that would be ideal. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So just uh, some focused time um, with them while they're with the chickens uh, and make sure that you're correcting in um, yeah, that behavior when you see it. Uh, the real Terry said, I just realized that it would have been less expensive to have our vet come out and help get arrows in the car. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Forrest said next cat should be called tuna. Yes. Uh, Andy's nickname for Jim. So one of the, one of the cat's name is, is Helpert. So like Jim's last name. And then the other, the male cat's name is Helpert. And then the female's name is Beasley. So it's like Jim and Pat, uh, or Jim and Pam, Jim, Jim, and, yeah. Pat. Jim and Pam. Uh, and, but I've already been like calling Helpert tuna just like, uh, like a nickname my my daughter hates it when i do it so i do it extra when she's around she goes, daddy <laughs> yes <laughs> tuna david answered the question exactly oh yes what we yep thought. yeah yes we call that the awkward teenage years and that's a little like early the, for it but so like they yeah about it's yeah. usually around like eight months but six months would still be right around that time so that's what you're experiencing that behavior i mean i yeah would david you have to yeah david you have to keep in mind too at six months that is still very much a puppy now it's a huge puppy that's a very to most people it looks like a full-grown dog and a mature dog and at times a six-month-old great pyrenees acts very mature uh but you have to remember at six months old it is still very much a puppy mm -hmm. so it's going to act like a puppy it's going to try to chase chickens like a puppy would it so, is good though that like what you said that what did you say he carries them around but doesn't Yes. Hurt them. That's a good sign. <laughs> Mac and Mabel, actually, we had no idea what we were doing. We've told the story before when we got them that we caught them basically playing doing the same thing with the chicken, and it was a whole thing. And it was right around right around that six age. eight months. And then they we corrected it, and they never did it again. Yeah. So David, I would encourage you um, if you if you can just spend some uh, focused time with uh, your Great Pyrenees, you can literally like get through that behavior in like a week to two, two weeks, weeks max. Mm -hmm. And after that, it's like smooth sailing. Your, your, your dog will just, your great Pyrenees will just um, ignore the chickens. And that's, that's the goal. That's the optimal behavior. It's hard to not leave your six month old alone with your livestock because they are bred and in, in, you know, to do that. But ultimately you're leaving a puppy with your animals. And that's just, I mean, be like leaving a and like, learned, It'd be like leaving a toddler in charge of something in your house and just mm -hmm. like leaving, like going somewhere mm -hmm. and leaving them at home in charge of something. Like, I certainly <laughs> wouldn't recommend any kind of harsh correction because they're not going to respond well to right. that. Um, just a consistent correction and yeah. redirection. Forrest said uh, he's building a coop at the edge of the pasture so the dogs can get used to them. The hope is. Uh, yes. to one day free range them with all the animals. That's perfect for us. Yeah. So like on our property, we've got like a really big custom built, almost like a shed chicken coop within like a pretty large uh, run that's attached, attached mm -hmm. to the coop. And then we have a door off of the coop that we can open and let the chickens free range. Um, if you have something like that, David, I would suggest keeping the chickens in the run as long as they have sufficient space in there i mean i know it's not the same as letting them free range but if you can just for two weeks keep the chickens in the run and allow your dog to then have that access uh you know to see and smell the chickens through you know the chicken wire or whatever or the run but not be able to pick it up and run around with it um let them have that exposure and unless you're outside with them and then at that point open it up open it up uh, and let the chickens out but you're out there to supervise it and to correct it mm -hmm. and when you're not out there you put the chickens back up mm -hmm. i know it's forest. kind of a pain in the butt but Same um forest when you do get 
yeah. your your chickens because anytime we get new chickens, we always keep them in the run, especially if they're to chicks, train but, them to to know to go back to the well, coop and at for night. the dogs to know that like they're allowed here because yep. we've told the story before about our neighbor's chicken getting into the yard. Yeah, yeah. So cool. Well, hey guys, we're right at an hour. Uh, if you have any last minute questions, drop them in the live chat. We're going to be uh, wrapping it up here in just a couple of minutes. The puppies are out there just like sleeping out. in the mud. And then inside here, Mac Jr. is right back there on Fresh the floor out. just sleeping after playing with yep. all the inside dogs like Rosie right there, our blue healer. And... Uh, Kittens, kittens are, are still going at it. I have nothing. To this say. is this is super special right here. <laughs> the fireplace is like cleaned out from the winter, and he likes to go in there and then like get stuck. I don't know why. <laughs> Cats are something else. They're a little different. There's like orange cat memes, and like until recently, I was like, oh, I mean, are they really that bad? Yeah. Yes, they are. They're entertaining though. Yes. Well, awesome. I think that's going to be it for tonight's live stream. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, if you haven't already, give us a subscribe. Okay, next week is the 4th of July. Oh, is it? Is next week the 4th of July? Uh, it <laughs> is on Tuesday. All right. So um, I'll have to pick a different day. Yeah, we'll pick a different day for our next live stream because next Tuesday, is the 4th of July. We're not going to do a live stream on the 4th of July. Everybody's going to be wanting to pop fireworks and stuff. And honestly, you know where we'll be? Out with the dogs. We'll be out with the dogs because our dogs at Great Pyrenees usually do not like loud noises like fireworks and thunder. So if you ever want to know where uh, Jeff and Michelle are on uh, either New Year's Eve or 4th of July, we literally ring in the New Year's out on the property with the dogs. And We're like, Woo, happy Texas New Year. Yes, Texas Independence Day is also a thing, a thing where people blow up the sky <laughs> and our dogs hate it and act like they're Vietnam War vets with PTSD, yes. like running around crazy. So um, that's where we'll be next week at this time. So uh, stay tuned to you know our, our email newsletter or our social media. We'll figure out you know a different and alternative day and time and uh, we'll post that. So stay tuned and we'll see you again sometime next week. Thank you guys.